Pass stopped by Tukarski. Goudreau and Zahorna continue to work it. Now behind the net. Angelo looking to center. Again, here's the Horner with a shot, and he scores his first in the National Hockey League in his first NHL game. Yes! Penguins win for nothing against the Buffalo Sabres. I know it's the Sabres and they suck. But this game tonight, I was pretty damn happy watching, not only because Radim Zahorna scored his first NHL goal in his first NHL game on his first NHL shot, but it's just a pretty good game by the Penguins. Jared McCann, who I am, you know, his number one fan, he had two goals tonight, not only two goals, but two power play goals He's getting the opportunity there. The penalty kill looked great. Casey DeSmith got a shutout. Let's go over the lines. I just went over a bunch of positive things, and now we're going to go over the lines and go over some negative things because Kasperi Kapanen got hurt in the last game, and he'll be out week to week, which fucking sucks. However, the Penguins' depth has showed up, and again, I know it's the Sabres, but the Penguins' depth which has struggled in the past this season, is starting to show up. They're getting good reps against a bad team like the Sabres. Angelo had an assist tonight. Gaudreau looked good in another game. And then, of course, Radim got his first NHL goal. Let's go over the lines real quick. McCann, Aston, Reese, and Rodriguez is not the worst third line ever. It's not a second line. And that's what the Penguins had to resort to because Zucker, Malkin, and Kapanen Arguably, the Penguins' just second line is out. Also, Brandon Tanev's still out. Also, Teddy Bluger's still out. And, you know, it's starting to pile up, the injuries, especially at forward. The Penguins went through this with the defense earlier in the season. They had to get Yannick Weber in the lineup and Kevin Churchman. And now they're going through it with the forwards. But adversity, the Penguins will overcome it. They win this one against the Sabres 4 nothing. So Hornet slots in on the third line. Uh, no other lineup changes on the defense. Uh, DeSmith gets the start because it was a back-to-back, -back, and he got the shutout in this one. Now, in the first period, Rasmus Ristolainen head-hunted. He was head-hunting. He went after both Gensel and Crosby, and I get, I totally get you need to go after, you know, star players when you're on a 15-game losing streak, and, you know, you need to make a difference out there physically. But the hit on Crosby was absolutely bullshit and really fucked up that it wasn't called that's my bad call brick of the night all right we need to start uh, penguins fans i call upon you we need to start considering rasmus ristralainen as our you know as a rival player to us because he's been pretty scummy to the penguins in the past and you know in these in these games this year he's not the level of a tom wilson but he's one of those players that i think we should all collectively come together and hate and if rasmus ristralainen is watching this video somehow magically it's not against you personally. It's the way the way, it's the way you play on the ice. Tonight you headhunted Crosby and, you know, fuck you for that. The Sabres weren't that bad in the first period. They had a decent amount of chances. They were playing scrappy, but the Penguins got the first goal and then it just snowballed after that. First goal on this one scored by Radim Zoharna. Coming over from the Czech League and getting called up from Wilkes-Barre and getting promoted from the taxi squad, all within like a week. It was a nice, just simple bar down shot from the slot, Pastor Angelo, who was behind the net. And man, I was so freaking happy when I saw this. I'm a stickler for first NHL goals, first career goals. And, you know, the way that they celebrated with him after they got the goal, the rest of the Penguins was just, it was really sweet. And then essentially for the rest of the game, you know, the snowball effect continued. The Sabres couldn't get on the board because DeSmith was really damn good. He didn't have to, you know, stand on his head by any means, but he played good when he needed to be. Jared McCann had two power play goals. Now that Malkin is out, Kasperi Kapanen replaces him. Oh, Kasperi Kapanen is out. Jared McCann now replaces him, so he's on the power play. He may stay on the first power play unit after this. He had two goals on the power play in this one, his sixth and his seventh. And then Gensel scored. I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't even see the Gensel goal because I was starting to, you know, work on this board um, during the third period, and I didn't even see it. But Jake shakes tomorrow. Penguins won this one four nothing. My three stars are Zahorna, DeSmith, and McCann. There was a lot of options to get your three. 
three stars out of this one. You have your third career shutout against the Sabres with the Smith. Two goals, both on the power play from McCann, and then your first career NHL goal from Zoharna. Um, and meanwhile, and just, you know, this is just a great game, not only because the Penguins won, but because meanwhile, the Flyers lost 8-3 to three to the New York Rangers. And the other night, they got killed by them too. And that's just amazing because the Flyers right now fall to 34 points and the Rangers have 32. So they're about even now. The Penguins have 44 right now. And, you know, gaining some separation there. We play the Islanders next, which will be a good series because the Islanders... In my opinion, they're not the best team in the division, even though statistically they are right now. They've played the Sabres and the Devils a lot. The Penguins are just now getting into that. And, you know, they, they've gotten the points from that. The Penguins will eventually. Could the Penguins win the division? I have an article on Pittsburgh Sports Castle about that. However, my little exercise of the night is what I put together. I put this together before the game. I didn't even know Redeem Zahorna was going to play. And, you know, thankfully I did because of what happened. I put together three names on the right side, my right side of this board that I thought could be young players that the Penguins could potentially call up. I, young players. Redeem Zahorna is 24. Prospect players, if you will. Zahorna, Poulin, and Legare. And, you know, I've seen a lot of comments lately and just, you know, people calling for Poulin and Legare to play in the NHL already this year because the Penguins have had a lot of injuries. And it's like, oh, just call them up. It's not going to happen, guys. I, I, I want it to happen as well. But with these first, you know, these high-regarded prospects, the Penguins, the only way that they'll make the lineup is through training camp, and they'll make the lineup that way. Unless there's dire injuries, they're not going to make the team this year. Um, and my PFR question for the night for you guys is when are they going to make the team? My vote is next season. They'll have a shot to. I think one of them makes the team. I don't know who. Because I think they're both pretty even in terms of, you know, their shot at making the team. I think Poulin's the better skilled player, but I'm getting off track. Let's go over Zahorna first. Zahorna and Wilkes-Barre Scranton this season, 11 games played, 9 points. Um, and he's been on the taxi squad for about a week, gets the call up in this game, and you all know what he did. Um, his career high was in the Czech League last season, 2021, 12 goals, 10 assists, 21 points. He plays all forward positions, and he's very similar to Dominic Simone in his rate um, in terms of scoring in the Czech League. They had, a, they had a similar points per game average in the Czech League because Simone also played in the Czech League. I'm not comparing those players themselves because, you know, Zahorn is hopefully not as, you know, I don't even know what word to use to describe Simone. Anyways, Zahorna... My when question for him is as soon as tonight, and that is exactly what happened. You know, the Penguins have played Jankowski, Lafferty, Goudreau, Angelo, O'Connor, Curry, Churchman, arguably all AHL forwards and defensemen, and tonight they played Zahorna. I could see him sticking around if he had, you know, another good game. Obviously, it's only one game, but he could stick around um, on the fourth line for the Penguins because they need it. Now, Poulin and Legare is mainly the focus of what I wanted to do for the exercise tonight. They're both 20 years old. And I see a lot of people, again, wanting them to come up. Not only are they not going to come up because they're not ready, they're not going to come up because uh, they both play for Valdor right now. And Valdor's final game of the season is happening right now. may have already concluded. It was tonight. Final game of the regular season. Uh, they're second in the queue. Uh, the QMJHL, Valdor is. And they're obviously going to want Samuel Poulin and Nathan Legare for their playoff run. And... You know, they've been the top scorers on their team. There's been a lot of postponed games in the queue also as well. But still, you know, they're prepping for a playoff run. They're not going to let Poulin and Legare head off to Pittsburgh. Poulin's career high. Well, both. Let me just or come out and clarify that Poulin and Legare both did not play for Valdor before the season. They're both now on Valdor. Uh, Legare was actually traded as like a trade deadline acquisition for Valdor. And, you know. Legare and Poulin are good friends. They played uh, like peewees and midgets together and things like that. Uh, Poulin so far this season, 22 points, 16 assists, and 16 games played. Um, you know, Valdor second in the QMJHL, their last regular season game was today. Poulin's career high was 77 points in 46 games played. Um, that came with Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke Phoenix in 2019 and 2020. Uh, according to you know elite prospects and, and hockey reference and all those websites, he's a strong, he's strong on the puck. He's a good puck handler. He's very sizey. Um, he's a good two-way forward and a good power forward. Uh, for Legare, 
Um, of course, Valdor as well this season. 18 points in 16 games played, 9 goals, 9 assists. Um, and his career high is 87 points in 68 games played. That is a higher number than uh, Samuel Poulin's career high. But, of course, Poulin only did that in 46 games played, while Legare did that in 68 games played. Um, and that was in 2018-2019. Uh, according to Elite Prospects, uh, Nathan Legare never gives up on a play, um, and he moves his feet very well. But it's a little too early for these guys to come into the lineup. I could see it happening potentially next season. We don't even know who the Penguins are going to lose to expansion, how the lineup's going to look, things like that. However, I think the Penguins have two good, decent prospects here. They're not Cole Caulfield. They're not, you know, the next McDavid. They're not high-end prospects, but they could definitely help. A two-way forward is what the Penguins could need right now, and Poulain will fit that bill. And I really like Legare's chances of being becoming a top six forward for the Penguins because he kind of reminds me of Jake Gensel, an underrated uh, third-round draft pick, and the Penguins have been so successful drafting in the third line. I did a poll on Twitter the other day. Um, who do you guys think would have the more, more successful career with the Penguins? 68% of you guys said Poulin. Um, 31% voted Legare. If I could vote, I would vote Legare. I think he is the more well-rounded NHL player, even though Poulin is way more talented. Um, but I'm still just excited for both of them to end up playing. So those are your three young players that could make the Penguins sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later. Um, and the Penguins win this one 4 nothing against the Buffalo Sabres. Now, if you start towards the end of this video, I want a quick personal update. Um, today I was accepted... Um, as an intern for Pittsburgh uh, Sports Now, but technically Pittsburgh Hockey Now. It's under the Pittsburgh Sports Now banner. Um, I've been searching for an internship for a while now. And, you know, shout out to Dan um, and everyone at Pittsburgh, Sh uh, Pittsburgh Hockey Now, you know, for giving me the opportunity to do that. I'll be writing for them uh, and producing a lot of content in them come fall of this, uh, of this year. And I'm very excited for it. And today was a pretty damn good day because the Flyers lost, the Penguins won, and I finally got my internship. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. The Penguins win this one for nothing against the Buffalo Sabres. My three stars of the game. So Horna to Smith and McCann. My PFR question for you. When are Legare and Poulin going to enter the NHL? Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Mighty Ducks Game Changers comes out tomorrow. I'll be having a review on that. Also, the NWHL is back this Friday, tomorrow, and this Saturday. Only three games in total to watch. All on NBC. Go watch them. It's going to be some great hockey. I'm also going to have a review on it on my channel. Islanders this weekend. I'll see you guys then.